Hi there, it's Mary Charlson from 5minutemarketing.com. Welcome to this week's video. We're, this week, we're going to be taking a look at NFTs, crypto, blockchain, and the metaverse. I've been asked by quite a few people why on earth I'm playing in this space. People who don't even understand what crypto is or NFTs and, you know, what the universe and the, <laughs> the metaverse, we should say, and the blockchain, what all of this has to do with marketing. And my, my response to them is, is simply this. It, you know, the truth is, is that I'm involved because the only way I can truly learn about something new is to play. And so there's a lot of marketing leaders that I follow in the marketing space, um, and they are, all of them, uh, without exception, are really quite a buzz about what's happening in this whole crypto blockchain space, and quite, um, quite curious how it is all going to connect in with eventually what evolves into Web 3.0, the next iteration of the internet. Now, um, you know, I've, I've, I, you know, initially I was like, I don't still kind of get all this stuff. I really don't quite understand how it all kind of connects together. And so I started, you know, just being curious about, about all of this um, in the early stages, taking a course, I uh, signed up for something with UC Berkeley, uh, an online course to learn about blockchain and crypto back in, you know, uh, the latter part of 2021 immediately realized it was in over my head and I uh, was with a bunch of IT and engineer guys. And I was like, oh my God, I just have to kind of like, kind of get a little bit of academic grit here and, and emerge with the badge, so to speak. Went way deeper than I needed to go, but it gave me a really good fundamental understanding of where blockchain crypto, where it all kind of started, how it's evolved and why there's so much curiosity. At its heart, uh, blockchain is, is a decentralized kind of platform which allows you to free yourself from kind of, um, kind of government influence or big business kind of taking over very much like it has happened in the web 2.0 space where we've got you know, big social media platforms that dominate and, and have all of our data in exchange for you know, um, you know, delivering us content uh, you know, and free use of their space. So I got interested in that, learned some more about that. Then I was curious to learn a little bit more, um, you know, around NFTs. And, and ultimately, you know, NFTs um, it stands for non-fungible non -fungible tokens, and it allows ownership of a unique digital asset like art or music, um, but really it could be applied to anything with its smart contract associated. And so it could be, you know, event tickets, it could be fractional real estate, um, you know, the cool thing for creators is, though, that they within that contract, they retain royalties uh, every time that item is sold within the chain. And so it, it kind of creates, you know, there's, it, there's the creativity of the utility, the benefits kind of unlocked with the NFT ownership, and it's endless, right? It could be include conferences, backstage access. Uh, exclusive meetups, um, you know, are just, just a few ideas uh, that come into play there. And so ultimately, the blockchain as technology make it all possible without being hostage to a centralized power, as I said, and NFTs really give that whole ownership and creator status back to the creators without having the, um, the distributor and, and having being held hostage to somebody else kind of taking profits like a gallery or, you know, or um, like a, a record company that publishes music work. So that's some of the stuff that I had learned. And so one, once it came around to January, I felt kind of confident enough to set up my own, my first crypto account, set up an account within Coinbase. It's not unlike, um, you know, and kind of, it's like a, like a dashboard and I linked it to my accounts, my, my bank account, PayPal, hooked it up to a Coinbase hot wallet, right? Some people use MetaMask. Um, that's on my mobile, and then link that back to the Coinbase account. And that gave me a way to then put in some money and convert it to Bitcoin and Ethereum, Ethereum being the, the chain where a lot of the NFTs live, as well as a few other, other uh, chains as well. But kind of set that all up, and then went about setting up an OpenSea account, which is essentially kind of like a dashboard, you know, to buy and sell NFTs. Um, let me take you over and just show you um, 
what I did there. So this is the the OpenSea account. Um, and you can see I sort of set it up, you know, it looks sort of like almost like a dashboard, like a piece of social media. And this is where I can then kind of position myself and then where I have uh, purchased and you can just sort of display some of your NFTs. So this was kind of the, the, the beginning of, of things. Um, let me just uh, take you back and um, and uh, tell you a little bit more about this. So, you know, I ventured in this NFT space, um, you know, kind of I still continued to learn, uh, reading, listening to lots of podcasts. I figure, you know, come January, I was I was sitting on at least 50 hours of of immersed learning and um, and was still learning about things like minting and gas fees and ETH and wrapped ETH and alternative chains like Polygon and you know how do you get whitelisted for projects and launches and a whole lot of things around possible scams and things to avoid. And so I was still very much learning in that space. And um, really for my own sanity, <clears throat> um, can assure you know, anyone who's listening to this, uh, I've only put money into this space is a wild west uh, that I could easily afford to lose and um but i i have certainly seen um you know it's you know the gains for potential you know the potential gains are real um but it's in an assumed forever increasing values index it's not a place to play with next month's rent money and i have seen some younger folks that probably are in that position so would highly recommend it against that so what have i invested in and why so i bought some nfts for you know, probably two main purposes to invest in as an uh, for, with an artist and to invest in a community behind a project. So let me um, tell you a little bit more about the thinking behind that. Um, and then, you know, some of the, the, the other projects that are out there. So, you know, collecting art appeals to like a different, often more kind of moneyed, often mature audience. Um, and art NFTs are, you know, they're really no different than numbered prints using, you know, almost like old lithographs um, or single originals. And so the cool thing with the art NFTs is, you know, it's proof of ownership over time and the ability to reproduce for your own benefit as a hard copy if you choose, or hold it in the digital space where you can access and look at it, share it, show it to others. Uh, but each time that NFT is sold in the secondary market, the artist gets a royalty from it. And that's the beautiful thing here is that you're connected directly to the artist the, and with the buyer and the investor. And then those outside traditional distribution businesses like galleries and auction houses that usually take a big cut are kind of out of, out of the, um, the chain. So the artist that I invested in was um, Ugonzo is what he's known as, but Ulysse uh, Gonzalez. Um, he's a psychedelic artist from Portland. Um, I have his uh, first, he was the first artist to have an NFT featured on crypto.com uh, with the launch of 10,000 Psycho Kitties. You may have heard of that. And he made history when they sold out. Um, so yeah, but long before NFTs were a thing, Ugonzo was an artist um, and his story is pretty compelling. He's a, an immigrant raised by a single mom always encouraged, you know, she encouraged his passion for art, doing, you know, initially copying famous artists, you know, like Van Gogh and Dali, before he took it to the next level with his own kind of creative psychedelic style. Watching him paint a large canvas um, in swaths of layers and, you know, things and telling the story, it's, it's mesmerizing. Um, along the way, he caught the attention of people like Joe Rogan, who owned some of his work, and also uh, whom he painted a brick mural in Chicago with Joe Rogan in a spacesuit being sucked up by aliens. And so it's, um, it was a multi kind of scaffold uh, project uh, where he applied with aerosol cans and graffiti style. I mean, the guy is flat out cool and his art's crazy and he loves his mother. So what more do you really need to know? Um, <clears throat> let me just show you <clears throat> some of his, uh, some of his stuff. And uh, and you'll you'll kind of get a, a sense of what uh, what I mean here. So this is his his Instagram page. Um, got quite a few followers there. Featured artist on crypto.com, and uh, this is some of his crazy stuff that he's been posting. Um, you can kind of get a sense of his style. Uh, but it it is uh, it's absolutely compelling if you go onto his website and you watch how he paints. Um, it's just, it's, it's a 10 minute video, uh, which is just really, really super cool. And so the pieces that I own that he did, so there's the Martian cat, number one, and this Martian cat, uh, number 9888, uh, and then a couple of these as well. Um, so <clears throat> the, the, uh, 
the the thinking uh, around some of this stuff was, um, you know, to uh, I, I really I, I love the idea of having a number one series, and so this whole idea of you know the the um, the Martian cat number one, it's signed, uh, it's one of a kind, first issue in the series, and um, you know I just I. I just love it. I think it's cool. I intend to visit him as an artist in Portland when we're down that way. Love to have him sign an, an, an original copy of it as well. And, uh, and I bought the other one, you know, his was it Mary Bowles 98, right? And another a couple other ones as well. Um, reasonably priced and uh, they're just kind of just goofy, kind of goofy looking uh, NFTs, really in his cool style. And uh, and just wanted to kind of hold on to those. So should his art kind of really take off, then at least I've got, I could sell a higher profited one, but still have some in my collection. And he really nurtures his community as well. And I think that's the other piece of it, right? So if you're gonna buy an artist, you need to have someone who also understands how to nurture the community, um, you know, primarily through Twitter and Discord, but also on Instagram. And you know, not all artists make themselves accessible, nor want to, right? And many don't even understand social media and the whole online digital world. But he truly understands that he's building a brand and a business. And uh, that was the other reason why I wanted to get behind him. The other reason why I've bought NFTs is for kind of the whole community back end of the project. And so another project I invested in was the Fame Lady Squad. And I hold Fame Lady number 554. I'll um, show her to you in just a moment. And, you know, she's unique in that she has one blue eye, one red eye. And uh, she was early in the series of 8,888. Um, you know, and, and rare um, is where it's at with uh, generative art projects, and, uh, and which is what this was. But it's the story behind the project and the community that now it exists that I thought was so cool. So Fame Lady Squad was originally launched in July 2021 as a female generative um, avatar NFT project. Uh, but in August, um, you know, there was a bit of an uprising uh, in the community when it was discovered that this, quote, all female project was actually uh, headed up by a bunch of Russian guys. And it was project was essentially taken over by the community um, and key community members who became um, and became one of the first and probably the most infamous now community run collectible projects. And so now, that, now they exist to provide opportunities and support for women in all backgrounds to educate them about the crypto and the NFT space. And so they have a mission. The NFTs are widely held, meaning they're large, bat large batches of owners, you know, um, or large batches owned by single owners. Um, and that's another really good sign. Um, and they have an increasingly, you know, success of increasing value over time. So, you know, while the story is compelling, um, you know, and, and the community is now united behind them in terms of educating women in the space, um, you know, it, it, and that was a piece that I've observed was really missing in all of this kind of crypto blockchain NFT culture is that it, there's a lot of kind of kind of guy bro culture. And so a group of women with one of the first projects uh, to kind of come out here to champion educating women I thought was cool. Um, the fact the project was is maintain its exclusivity and rising value based on only a limited number, you know, 8,888 was pretty cool. And also just that 8888 representing symbols of infinity, right? Um, and power to women was also very appealing. The gals behind it, Ashley Smith, uh, goes by at I am bored Becky and Daniel at NFT Ignition are a great mix of kind of sales, business, publicity, social media savvy, and IT backgrounds. Um, Ashley Smith is actually from my hometown, Vancouver. Um, she's already established herself as a successful businesswoman and uh, as realtor, president of the board chair, uh, realtor, real estate board of Greater Vancouver. And she was also the recipient of the business uh, BIV, um, uh, Business in Vancouver's 40 Under 40 Entrepreneurship. And then Danielle is kind of the kind of the IT uh, brains behind things. So, you know, since, you know, buying the NFT project, I've joined Twitter spaces, live chats, learned a ton more from these gals in the community and felt really kind of welcomed with, you know, stumbling around asking kind of dumb questions, likely also the oldest person in the room who wasn't using her avatar as her picture on Twitter. Um, but th that's when I had to explain to them, it's like 95% uh, of the people who follow me on Twitter are not following me from the crypto space, and they'd be really super confused. And so the, the, the gals were, were great, you know, as projects go, you know, Fame Lady Squad is probably, you know, it has a solid community behind it. 
they've got a roadmap uh, plan for success. They launched a podcast this last year following a, a shared keynote at uh, NFT NYC, which is the largest conference for NFTs. It was held in New York City. And they're, they're really just championing the whole space for uh, creator space for women uh, heading towards Web 3.0. So three reasons, you know, why I've invested in NFTs. So you know, first and foremost, to learn, right? I, I believe, truly believe you, the only way that you can learn is to play and invest. Um, I've invested in true artists to support the work, but also hold for future value. And the third reason is investing in a project that has a strong community um, and a story and a purpose that I respect and believe in. Um, and that the net result of that being uh, the potential for increased value over time. So there's, there's some other stuff happening out there with creator communities, with rally, rally coins. That's another thing. Um, dashboard uh, and crypt <laughs> creator coins. I mean, there's just so much crazy stuff happening in this space. Uh, Joe Paluzzi, Mark Schaefer are playing in that space. They're, um, they're a couple of uh, marketing writers that I follow. They've got their own creator coins on Rally. Uh, Joe's, uh, Joe has got Tilt coin. Mark has got Rise coin. And uh, these are, you know, coins that they can kind of um, Rally converts, you know, sends out shares based or coins based on uh, the number of shares and, and the creators. And you can convert those into your creator's coin um, and then, you know, access special features, products and events that they're hosting. Um, and they can use it, um, you know, they're really using it to nurture their community. For, you know, for example, you know, Mark Schaefer is hosting a uh, small restaurant lunch in San Diego during social media marketing world. And he issued uh, an invitation to the folks that hold his creator coin uh, to, to be invited to that uh, while I'm at the conference. So it's kind of like almost being part of an exclusive club. And that's, you can attach so many real world, tangible type of experiences also to kind of this whole idea of creator coins and NFTs. So is this, is this space exciting? Um, you bet. Uh, you know, I'm not crazy being involved in crypto, NFTs and blockchain, but I am curious. And, you know, I believe truly that being curious is what markers, marketers need to do uh, to remain relevant and valuable in their niche. So hopefully that helps explain a little bit of what's going on. I'm going to put the links to a more detailed post around this. And uh, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I hope you stay curious as well, learning about this new space.